Hi, my name's Corb Lund. How are you feeling, Calgary? Okay. Um, I write cowboy songs for a living, and uh, I want to change the name of my talk, because I initially had titled, I think it's called Me and Art. The reason I named it that, because it was three in the morning, the deadline where I had to submit the title, and I was kind of lit up, and I thought it would be really funny to... I thought it would really be funny to pretend that I thought they wanted me to talk for seven minutes about my uncle Art. <laughs> And I've got a, he's my great uncle, he's a, he was a cowboy, I've got a great picture of him, so if we meet in the lobby, I'll show you the picture, but. Um, I would like to rename it to uh, Art for Everybody. Um, I'm going to start off with a couple of definitions. I've thought about this a lot in the van, about how to define art. My, my favorites are um, refined creativity and focused self-expression. So, refined creativity and focused self-expression. And, and the adjectives are key there, because refined and focused is there, that's the only real difference between artists and people who, are, who think they aren't artists because I think that anyone has had the experience of uh, uh, coming up with a line. I know people have come up with songs because I get that all the time. But, uh, you know, an idea for a movie or they're doodling on a pad with a pen and it turns out better than they thought. Any of those things, that, that's all it is really. It's just, it's a matter of, that's all artists do is take those things and focus on them and, and, and spend a lot of time and commitment and hard work uh, refining those things and eventually I guess they're artists, right? Um, I, I think uh, it, it sort of dovetails into uh, something that I feel strongly about. I think that, I think that natural talent is, is overrated, and I think that desire trumps it. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, there aren't people who are ahead of us. And we, you know, like, I know plenty of people who could sing without any training, and they could play guitar, and I know people who can write very well without any training and dance. But, I think, I also know people who can do those things really well who haven't pursued them enough, and it's really frustrating for those of us who had to work at it. But uh, I think that, I th as in the lean years, I used to teach guitar lessons, and everybody had a reason they thought they couldn't play guitar. Their hands are too big, or their hands are too small, or too thick, or too thin. But really, 99% of the time, it's really just a matter of doing it. And, and like I said, um, um, this is important because we all have people around us who, who are clearly ahead of the game before, you know, they're further along than we are, but um, I think that can be overcome. Um, I think that's a really important point. Uh, that's also not to say that it doesn't discount the fact that there are Michelangelo's out there and Charlie Russell's and Jimi Hendrix's that will never be, but I think I firmly believe that anybody who's willing to put the time into it and the commitment and the hard work can be an artist and create great art. Um, but that, that's kind of the rub, the last sentence, because the hard work is, is really hard. And it's not, it's not like ditch digging hard, it's, it's psychologically hard. Um, art has a way of uh, sneaking up on you and making you really examine yourself in a really deep way. If you're going to really fully commit to an artistic life, you have to re-examine yourself over and over and over, and it's really scary. And it's depressing and it's sad. Um, <laughs> but it's true. I think everybody will attest to that who, who does art. But uh, on the flip side, it's hopefully in equal measures, it's joyous and it's liberating and it's really, really satisfying. Um, in my line of work as a songwriter, what I always get asked is, do you write the words first or the music first? And sometimes the answer really is, I don't. sometimes it's the word first and sometimes it's the music first and sometimes it's both. Sometimes it's neither, sometimes it's the mushrooms first. <laughs> but. The, you, you take my point. The, the point is, there's no real way of doing it. <laughs> it's true. Art is dirty, man. It's true. It's, it's down in the muck. And, and it's funny about, I'm, I'm going to digress for a second. It's funny because I've always wondered about that. Because as soon as you get into the theater or one step away from the actual artist, it, it becomes a very highbrow operation. But the artists themselves, I know them. And it's, it's, it's very much not that, like they're, you know, they're smoking dope and they're drinking whiskey and they didn't make the rent and they're cheating on their girlfriends and it's, it's very messy stuff. But uh, that's kind of what makes art, it's true. Um, anyway, back to the original thought. <laughs> Words are music. But my point with that is that almost every time I, I write songs and make a record, it's, it's a new challenge. And the, it's funny because it, it seems like the second, the second that you think you know how to do it, you don't actually know how to do it. Because as soon as you get complacent about it and think, oh, I got this, I can do this without really trying, your music suffers, or your, your art suffers, in my opinion. And um, 
uh, you have to be very vigilant about that. And it's, it's, it's really scary. It's, it's to, you have to re-examine yourself every time. You never really, you know, my buddy Ian Tyson is 83 years old and he has the same insecurities as all of us do when he makes a new record. We talk about it all the time and it's, it's, a, it's a battle every time. But having said that, it's very satisfying. I would recommend it to anybody. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's true. It, it, there's a lot of potential for growth there. Um, another, another point about bringing people to, or music and art to everybody is that um, I'm in a unique position because um, people that go to the Glenbo and see the uh, paintings on the wall, everyone knows that's art, that's acknowledged as art. And, you know, if you go to, I saw, I saw Hoffman do uh, Death of the Salesman in New York last year, and that's everyone, pretty much everybody at the theater would probably consider that art. But I'm in a weird place because not everyone considers country music art. And granted, not all country music is art, but some of us are. <laughs> it's true, I'm not being funny. Um, uh, I, some of us do our best to, uh, to make art. And I'll tell you, you know, when you're in the, you know, even when I play the Calgary Folk Fest, for example, a lot of the people in the audience would probably consider what me and some of the artists are doing as art. But when, I, when I'm playing the honky tonk in Lubbock, Texas, or maybe Nanton, Alberta, you know, they don't recognize what some of us are doing as art. And in fact, sometimes they flat out deny it. Like, I don't know about that art shit, but I sure like me some Willie Nelson, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. But I would argue that those people maybe need art the most. And, and I think that I, I know enough roughnecks and cowboys and, and truckers that our society has very few outlets for those people to express themselves. And for some reason, it's OK you know, to get real maudlin and real, real open about your feelings when there's a Willie Nelson song on. Um, but I think that art is really important for those people. And, you know, that sort of leads back into my, my central thought about art being for everybody. But I think that um, we forget that sometimes because a lot of what's considered, just, I think it's the way the word developed in the language. Art, art just doesn't seem to sit right with some forms of art, yet it is art. So I guess I'll leave it there and say that, uh, remember that art's for the people at the Glenbow and the people at the ballet, but it's for the shitheads in the bar too.